Welcome back. Super excited moving forward. In this lesson, I'm going to demonstrate how to install Android Studio on your computer. And I'm using Windows computer, but you can also use a Macintosh or other platforms if you need to install Android Studio on those. So let's jump right in. I'm going to navigate to the file explorer here. This is the file where it was initially downloaded. It's about almost to a near one gigabyte size. I'm going to go ahead and simply run the file. And as soon as I do this, it just verifies the installer. And then, of course, it's going to bring up a dialog box so that continue forward. User control, of course, dialog box comes up. Simply click on yes because you're allowing access to run the executable file. Perfect. Next is the welcome to Android Studio setup. Click next. Choose the components. Make sure the Android virtual device is checked. And this is because this will provide you the emulator once we actually get into the user interface of Android Studio and you start building your app. You can actually see what it looks like on a sample Android device. So that's what it does. It's simply a pre configured and optimized Android virtual device for app testing on the emulator. And it's recommended as well, so make sure that this is by default remains checked. So click next. Here's the file location. So all of the Android Studio file will be stored in this location. If you wish to save it in a different path, go right ahead, just change it or browse to that particular folder. So I'm going to leave it as is. Click next. And then choose the start menu folder. It's fine. And do the install. So it's going to run through the install, a little bit of time, and then once it's installed, we should be able to go to the next step. I can also click on the show details, by the way, just to see all of the files being extracted and installed. And as it's doing so, there are several JAR files, XML, and other Python scripts that are also being installed as we move along. So. The jar files are simply Java archive files that store certain methods or, or classes within those jar files. And that's what it actually uses to install. Perfect. So once it's completed, click next. And then it brings up to the completion Android Studio setup, which is start the Android Studio. So I'm going to go ahead and click finish. The next step before it actually opens the UI itself, complete installation, asks import studio settings from a custom location or do not import settings. So I'm going to click on do not import any settings, do not have a previous settings or folder. So click OK. And what this is going to do is going to try to open up Android Studio. And of course, this is powered by the IntelliJ platform. And we know IntelliJ is just integrated development. So before it opens up, it tries to find all the SDK components, development kit components, and it downloads it before it opens up the interface itself. So the idea here is that during the Android Studio install, it's just making sure that all of the requirements are met. So the Android Studio setup wizard will bring you a dialog box here, and it says, welcome back. This setup wizard will validate your current Android SDK and development environment setup. So I'm going to go ahead and click next. And what, what these icons, by the way, these things that you see is that we can develop our apps for, let's say, watch or phones or tablets or even IoT things, right? So there are several aspects to this particular version of Android, which is the latest version. So go ahead, click next. Install type, you can choose to either install a standard with the most common settings and options or you can choose to install custom. So let's go ahead and click custom, at least so you can see which options are available. You can always go back or the previous screen. So I'm going to select custom, click next. And here it asks you to wish to install the UI theme Dracula or IntelliJ. Okay, so if you select Dracula, then this is what it's going to look like. You select and remain with IntelliJ, which I'm going to use throughout this course. Just simply make sure it's selected by default and click next. And here, 
you have the option to install the virtual device. And this is important. Okay. You can always do it later as well, but it's better to do it right now. So make sure you select the Android virtual device. Once again, remember, this is just a pre-configured the virtual device for your testing of your app on an emulator. So as you're developing, you can actually see in real time what your app is going to look like. So I'm going to go ahead and make sure this remains selected. So the reason why you see this warning sign here, which says an existing Android SDK was detected. Of course, it was installed on this computer. That's why it picks that up and gives you the warning message. Otherwise, if you're doing first time, you're not going to get this. Also, some of these are damned right, so you can't really change any of these options. Because these are just the elements that are installed for you already. So the only part that's not was the Android virtual device. So I'm going to make sure I check this box, click Next. And it kind of gives you the option just to make sure that your disk space available on the drive is about 1.56 terabytes. And for this particular size of virtual device is about 850 megs. So let's go ahead and click Next. And then once you're done with this, go ahead and click Finish. And it's going to download the components for you that you've selected. Perfect. So once all of the components are downloaded, I'm going to go ahead and click Finish. And this will bring me to the Welcome to the Android Studio dialog box, version 3.2, which is the latest version at this point. And I have several options. I can start a new Android project. I can open an existing project. I can check out project from version control profile or debug, an APK, I can also import projects and so forth. On the bottom here, I've configured and get help. So if you click on the drop down arrow next to configure, I'll have several options, such as settings. I can go to settings right here before I actually complete the installation. Take a look at plugins, import settings, export settings, and so forth. But the idea here is that before you actually move forward your Android Studio installation. So for instance, let me quickly show you this. If I click on settings, it'll bring up a dialog box where I can navigate and take a look at each one of these settings and configure them now as opposed to later. So as an example, I could look under appearance and the theme is IntelliJ or change it back to Dracula. This was provided as an option few screens back as we were installing, right? So I could change the settings. But I'm going to leave it as IntelliJ and so forth. So as a homework, go through some of these options and kind of take a look. Some will make sense, some will not at this point in time. Not to worry. We will cover them throughout this course as we go along. But just to give you an idea that you can take a look at appearance and behavior settings, editor settings for example, general font that you want to use. Other settings are plugins, version control, and so forth. So just explore these areas. These make yourself comfortable with the settings. You can, of course, always change it later after the installation. Let's cancel out of here at this time. So perfect. So once I'm done with this, I'm going to go ahead and click on Start a New Android Studio Project. And this brings me to the next screen, which is create new project and asks for an application. So I'm going to give this a name. I'm going to say deliver car and then the company domain. So if you have a domain, I believe I've registered a domain for myself here at delivercar.com. So I'm just going to use that. Maybe we'll need this later once we actually start into the app development. Okay. And then here's the project location. You can, of course, change it. You want to leave it as is, that's fine. And then package name by default is given tom.delivercar.delivercar. And then you can, of course, change that as well, whatever it is that you use. And the company domain, I'm going to use, let's say, www. And as soon as I do this, the reason why I'm showing you this is because notice on the bottom here, the package names change. So it just depends on your own requirement as to what you want to do. You can always edit this as well. 
I'm going to leave it as. And then a couple of options that include the C++ support, programming language, and of course Kotlin support, which is like Java, right? So I'm going to use Kotlin. Select this. Click Next. This is the all-important screen, right, that you'll ever get. So which select the form factors and the minimum SDK. In other words, do you wish to use which version of Android you wish to use for development? And of course, we are going to use scroll down all the way down to Android API 28, which is Android 9 Pi, the latest version. As soon as I select this, kind of get a message, right, or some text by targeting API 28 and later, your app will run only on 1% of the, less than 1% of devices, which makes sense because it's one of the newest versions and not many people have upgraded Android 9 or Android Pi. So it just tells me that before I actually begin creating this new project, I need to be sure because this particular app or this particular project would only run on less than 1%. The total market share in the world is about 60%, 65% of Android devices. So of those, you know, it's going to be less than 1%. So not many individuals are going to actually be installing this. Okay, just so you know. But not to worry. Once we go through this course and, and passes, of course, everyone is going to be using Android 9, just like they use earlier versions, right? So all the way from the ice cream sandwich to 4, 4, 3, and then even versions earlier than Android 3, which almost become obsolete. So as we go forward, pretty popular are, are the N, Android N, or the Oreo, right? But no way, we're going to stick with Pi. We're the latest and the greatest. Perfect. So I'm going to select Pi. And then here are some other options, like Wear OS, if I need to do some development, or create an app for wearable devices, or TV, or Android Audio, Android Things, I could do so. And again, I can choose the version, API versions for each one of them different. So I'm going to leave this unchecked, but if you wish, you can check them and then click on Next. And of course, as a homework, let's go ahead and do it because you can always uninstall this, okay? And that's good practice as we're moving forward with the installation phase. So I'm going to leave phone and tablet because that's the apps that we'll be focusing on. And then click Next. The next screen is the activity. So activity is just the GUI interface. So it's just one screen on your phone. So if you go to the next screen, that's another activity. Okay, that's just the basic difference. So at this point in time, you can choose an activity to mobile. So for example, a basic activity, you need a bottom navigation activity, T, scroll down, you can use a fragment plus a view model. A fragment is just view boxes within the activity itself. We'll talk about that later as well. Or ad mob if you want to display ads, maps, and so forth. So you can pick and choose any of these. Think of these as templates, right? So we are going to choose, let's say, the basic. So select basic activity, click next. Or let's not do basic, let's do empty. Let's start from scratch. So just select empty, click next. Creates a new empty activity. You have to give a name because this is the name of this activity, remember? So think of activity as just one screen on your mobile device or your app that you're actually going to create. So the general layout file and the layout name, the underscore main. And this is good because we can check this box where it says backward compatibility. So the name of the activity class. So this is going to be our main or home page, or you can change the name, call it, okay, based on your own design of your app. So I'm going to leave this main activity, click finish, and this is going to go ahead and finally load the project and open up Android Studio. Perfect. So pretty straightforward process so far during the installation process. few things I need to watch out for, which are important, and then highlighted those, maximize this. Great. And as soon as I get into the UI or the user interface of Android Studio, Notice on the bottom, the project name or that I used, the car is actually syncing, right? So it's actually using the sync to 
pull all the files that it needs, especially the Gradle files. I'm talking about build automation tools like Gradle, Maven, and so on. But here we are going to stick to Gradle for our build automation. So on the bottom is just going to sync all the files and make sure everything that is required to build this project is updated. And Android Studio 3.2 automatically does this, and then you can go ahead and just kind of wait and see which files are uploaded. And if there are certain things missing, it's going to give you error or an option, and then of course a link with it. So all you have to do is just click a link, and then there you go. It's going to start syncing again. Pull those jar files or whatever files that are required to make sure that your project is synced and ready. And again, it starts the Gradle daemon and then runs the build figures the build, and so forth. You can always check the event log just to make sure what's being done. And then it also shows you that a couple of processes are running at the bottom. It says two processes running, and it's just doing the build. So we're almost complete, right? So let me expand this so you can actually see all of the builds, right? So it's actually still running the build for this particular project. And then for all the project, it's picking up all the jar file. And recall, these are just Java archive file classes, packages, and so forth. So it uses those for all the projects. I can expand or collapse, okay, to see the cross project, cross project app, and so forth. But just give you an idea as to what this is actually doing. It's just building up the project. It's smaller, and of course, you can scroll down too. So if you scroll down, you'll notice that it's downloading and then installing, right? All these jar files metadata files perfect so i'm going to let this run for a while in the meantime while this is running we can kind of take a look at what's new in 3.2 so as a homework let me assign you this right now so just go ahead and take a look at what's new in android version 3.2 android pi support for android app bundles you can scroll down and kind of take a look at the android app bundle is a new upload format that includes all of your read. So Google's Play new app serving model is called the dynamic delivery and uses your app bundle to generate and serve optimize it. I'm going to do another lesson on the difference between the previous version, let's say Android N or Marshmallow and other versions as compared to Android Pi and what are the differences. But just for now, give you an idea, flavor of what's Actually, it's new in 3.2, so I'm going to assign homework for you if you have a question, you can post that in discussion. So, I think I'm going to end this lesson here. I'm going to let the sync build. In the next lesson, I'm going to talk about the UI interface and components so you actually understand what it is after the installation we are looking at, right? So, the design and so forth. So, I'm going to talk about that here. Just make sure all of your syncs are build and valid if you do see a red dot for example or a link shows up then click on it so it downloads the necessary file for a successful build so hope this helps in this lesson we just learned how to in a demonstrated install and with this let's move to the next lesson